It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And welcome to the best of 2020. Dun, 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 dun. What a crappy year, oh. but still an okay year when it comes to whiskey. That's true. This is our top 10 favorite American whiskeys from the year. Now, Sarah, we're doing it a little bit different this year. It used to be we did, we were sticklers. Has to, by the letter of the law, be a bourbon. We thought we'd loosen up a little bit. Well, we do uh, American whiskeys in terms of rise. Last year we allowed rise, and mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe we allowed a finished in or two. I can't remember. I wouldn't have it. He wouldn't. He wouldn't have it. <laughs> but my argument is, we're seeing so much more of that. We're seeing blends, and we're seeing finishes, and yeah. we're seeing double barrels. As delicious as some of these are, I think that they should be allowed. And they are this this year. So All are welcome. That's why we're calling it. American whiskey. Yes, there's bourbon in here, there's rye, and there is finished American whiskey. So Sarah, uh, just real quick, we want to tell you how we got to the ones that were uh, basically contenders, blind contenders. Yes. Throughout the year, we noted 25 uh, different American whiskeys that we thought were the most notable to go into this contention. And just to check ourselves, we added four every day pours. Uh, just Fe feedback from last year's comments. Right? And then what we did is we took each one, lettered them, A, B, C, D, E, what, and so on, until we had 29, because that's five, 25 plus four. There you go. And we would just draw one randomly from a marked sample bottle, so it's blind. We would sit down with it, score out of 100. Uh, we got categories of nose, palate, mouthfeel, and finish, each worth 25, and average Inde our scores. Independent of each other. Correct. Yeah. Chad would score, I would score, we wouldn't speak until after mm -hmm. that was done. And then we would take an average of those two scores and see where it landed. So the top 10 is the average of all of our scores, but for the most part, we're pretty on par with each other. There are some, some folks out there who decide, this is my favorite of the year. They don't do a blind, and that's fine. There's also people who will factor in value and availability. And those are great too. Mm -hmm. It's great to have those lists out there. We don't take value or availability into consideration because it's completely blind, so we wouldn't know those factors. That is true. What we're looking to find out is for us, what was the best whiskey experience that we had in 2020? You know, some things we weren't able to get our hands on. Right. So this is only the things that we were able to get. Sure, people will be like, well, what about, you know, this random thing that there were only a thousand bottles released of? Like, it. well, we couldn't get it. So. Or we didn't like it enough to put it in. <laughs> So we figure, I mean, not that everyone can get what we got, but if we're able to get our hands on it through normal channels, like hopefully there's a chance for you as well. Hopefully that uh, explains our methodology. If you have any other questions, put them down below and we will uh, we'll try to uh, answer them. But let's start it off with number 10. So this list starts off with a kicker. Oh my One gosh, the... I screamed whenever <laughs> we revealed the answer. You turn the little sample bottle over. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna taste through all of these, but we do need to have something in our glass as we go. Another thing that we should mention is 25 days in December, the first through the 25th, we revisited 25 mm -hmm. of these uh, of these American whiskeys, are what we call baseline ones. Pikesville Rye being one of them not included. Well, we've done, you know, lots of content surrounding Right. You we've know, done an uncorking of, of Pikesville yeah. before. One of our baselines, one of our ones we decided to throw in because we do like it so much and it is a value and it is available. readily available, came in at number 10 on our list. How about it? I'll, I I'll drink to that. I was shocked. When people are like, I want a bourbon or rye under 50 bucks. This is always my go-to. I mean, Chad and I were like one point different on this. We, we agreed were. solidly we that were. this was an A+. Plus. Mm -hmm. we have Little Book Chapter 4. We put last year's in too, and it did well. It did well, uh, but we didn't like this one, I feel like, as much as we liked Chapter 3. Uh, or, or so we thought. Do you want to hear the <laughs> semi-sexual notes that I wrote about it? Do I? Uh, it says on the nose, brown butter, plums, figs, berries, burnt sugar, a hint of coffee, very complex. Mm. And then spicy allspice marmalade, very rich char and oak. Medium long finish, nice hug, keeps me wanting more. Keeps me wanting more. These are my words that I wrote like a month ago. <laughs> 
Dear Penthouse, <laughs> I guess now's a good time to tell you that we did a little prediction of what we thought mm. would go in our top five, and we'll get to that later uh, about the middle of the show. It's always fun to see how wrong you were. And this was not in there. Not in the not, predictions. Not in those predictions at all. But here it is, sitting at number nine. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> surprise, not surprised. Uh, it's Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Um, Which we repeatedly say is the best value. And not just out us, there. other other, other whiskey people. tubers uh, do as well. Um, Which everyone's gonna say, shut up, it's gonna be harder <laughs> to find. But the proof and the price, like, this is ideal. And we didn't well, even know those things. And also, you can't blame us when it's blind. Right. I mean, yeah, we put it in there as a That's baseline. This is actually our second baseline. To crack the top 10. Surprising a little bit that it cracked the top 10 of our best of, of 2020, but also not surprising because we do know that we love it. Hence why we put it in there as a baseline to go up against the LEs of, of 2020. Right, because as people like to do, when you say, oh, we got this bottle and it was 150 and it's really hard to find, people will be like, why would I buy that when, when I can I just buy, buy a rare breed? For those people, look at you. You're right. I mean, it hangs up there. We never denied it. No, it hangs out up there with the big dogs. Wow. Chad said Our... lovely on the nose. I said lovely. Smells high proof. I was right about that. For the palette, the first thing I wrote was, oh, wow. Now that's how you know. Oh wow, long finish, dry figs, dark rum and sugars and syrup, cherry, vanilla, dark cocoa finish, barrel, exceptional. We were one point difference in uh, scoring this. I was one point higher than you, but both. Um, Very close. Yeah, both yeah. in the in the 90s. We'll Definitely a solid A plus. A solid A plus for our number eight, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. If you watch the show, you are not surprised. <laughs> I, I, if anyone is surprised in the comments, then it's because you don't watch the show. You guys knew we were gonna put a bookers in here. I mean, we didn't really know. But it was, it was blind. Again, it was blind. But this one, this is the Granny's Batch 202001. It's so peanut buttery and delicious uh, and like all the things that we love about bookers. Uh, 2020, I think, came out strong with the 2021, uh, 2001 that is. I was like, is this the how the year's about to be? <laughs> I had so much hope yeah. in, in like February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we only get three batches. Now we should say this is our first example coming on the list of something that has multiple re releases. If you didn't know, because we haven't said it so far in this video, uh, things like this, like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Larceny Barrel Proof, uh, usually Stag Junior. The when old there's, fits. The old fits, when there's different releases, we try those against themselves. Off camera. Off camera, there you go. And then we decide. So for this one, we decided the it's 2020 01 was our favorite bookers, just as we did for the Elijah Craig and the Lars Nate and all the others we just said. As you said, peanut butter. This one had that peanut, peanut butter, butter note, almost kind of like an almond butter yes. as well. I said, whoa, dark caramel, oak, rich dessert, luscious toffee pecans. Wow, we get very romantic with these <laughs> Some, descriptions. Sometimes. That's just a snip. Sometimes. Well, here's one, when we uncorked it, we didn't want to like it because it was more expensive. We wanted to like the $50 one and say, oh, don't worry about splurging on this one. Just stick to the old tried and true. But that's not the way it panned out, Chad. That's not the way This is that what, cookie crumbled. Right, I have found myself coming back to this uh, 12 year knob crank, knob creek. Knob crank. Cask strength, wow. Knob crank, cask strength. I find myself coming back to this one, especially when I'm doing tasks. It's just like very comforting. Now this would be a great place to talk about our predictions. And if mm. we hadn't done this blind, if we hadn't done this blind, we would not have made this so Jim Beam heavy. I mean, we just had two back to back with the bookers and, and now the, this, this Knob Creek. Well, and then we also oh, had the, and the little, little book. book. Made yeah. it in too, so I just if, realized if that. We just kind of looked back on 2020 and he said, oh, I liked this, I liked this, I remember really liking this. We would make our top 10 list with a little bit of politics in there. Yeah. Let's have a, let's have some Jim, some Jim Beam. Let's also have some Wild Turkey, some Four Roses. You know I'm gonna take some something from Heaven Buffalo Hill. Buffalo Trace, some Heaven Hill. Let's have some Ellie's and let's have some more values. And, and again, we're not knocking anyone who doesn't do their blind. You can do, just like whiskey, there's no wrong answers, right? No. But that's why we do ours blind, because we know that when we do it blind, we can't hide, we can't hide our, our preferences. preferences. <laughs> they no. come out, and here they are with 
Number six, Snob Creek 12 year cast ring. This is 120.5. It had the, the peanut butter on the nose. It was bright, brittle, nutty, sugars and syrup, molasses and Nutella, sorghum, I cherry wrote... and dark chocolate, citrus on the back end, sharp pepper, long finish. Oh my goodness, yes. I also really like this one. You know, people say that the those really beloved uh, single barrel picks that, you know, people are like, why would I buy that when I can get, I'm sorry, you don't sound like that. A uh, 15 year single barrel pick. Well, it's rumored that those will be ramping down, if not just going. Poof. Sure, cause look, Goodbye. 12 and the 15 Cause this are... is what they're gonna do with yeah. it. If this is the new, what you can get. It's good. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> there is that. Now, since we are about ready to go into our top five American whiskeys of 2020, uh, let's go ahead and reveal. Oh, it's prediction time. It's prediction time. In no particular order. I said a stag because okay. last year, Stag Jr. beat out George T. Stag. Uh, the Bardstown Discovery Series, uh, I think it was the about the three that mm -hmm. I had said that I would put that right. on par with with some of the best BTAC that okay. we've had. Uh, Old Forester 150th mm, did love I can that see one that. when we had that. Yep. William LaRue Weller. Okay. The, Historically. Historically. And I thought the Parker's Heritage Heavy Char Bourbon because I loved the rye so much last year. We're pretty similar, Sarah. I said. Oh, really? Yeah, I said the William LaRue Weller because historically always loved it and we did really like it this year. Parker's Heritage Heavy Char Bourbon, a Discovery Series from Barstown Bourbon Company 3. Mm. I also said a stag. And then I said Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. You know, I remember liking it. So I did some like honorable mentions. Sure, just, at the bottom. just on the bubble. And those were? Elijah Craig uh, B520 was one of those. Yeah. Also Booker's 2020-01 because sure. I know how much I love, I know know thyself. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, and then the Barrel Whiskey Private Release, uh, AHOA. Shout sure. out Drew Bolin uh, <laughs> for giving that to us. I kept drinking on yeah, that one yeah, this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. what about you? Well, on the bubble for me, I put the Booker's, uh, I actually put this one, the Knob Creek cast Whoa, strength, because I remember, again, begrudgingly really loving it, like on it, no, it is worth it. <laughs> and then I put the William Heaven Hill, just because last year, the William Heaven Hill uh, won for us, and I do remember liking this one, not as much, mm -hmm. but I do remember liking it. I thought enough to get it in the top 10. Hey, before we move on to our top five, we want to pause real quick and tell you about our home on the internet. It is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get our Glen Cairns, our water glasses, our rocks glasses, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more always coming soon. That's whiskeyambitions.com. Also, blogs. Also blogs. Also blogs. Uh, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. We do patron only polls after the episode exclusives and more. All right. On to number five. Okay, this one definitely surprised me. Same. At 100 proof, but the 16 year. I mean, I remember liking it. I remember liking it, but I don't remember liking it this much. Me either. Uh, people are always asking, you know, should I get this one? Cause the bottle's really beautiful. And you know, up until now, I probably would have said pass. Uh, hard to find over like 150 bucks or more. Um, for the older ones, they get more expensive. They get more expensive. And I'm always like, you're paying $50 for the bottle. Is it really worth it? Mm, spend your money some other way. I, d I eat my words on this one. It is so tasty. I mean, to crack a top five, this one was not even on my radar right. to come in top 10, to be perfectly honest. Same, same. I think it's our first tweeter on the list so mm. far. Yeah, um, Heaven Hill, our first Heaven Hill. Uh, so I Heaven mean, Hill, you know how to do one. The top five isn't a surprise, but this particular expression is like uh, this could have been, should have been electric Craig barrel proof. I, I don't know, but it's not. I like your first note on oh. the nose. So nice! Exclamation point. Exceptional. Exceptional. Nuance you wrote. Subtle oak and vanilla, mm. faint cinnamon, oh. brown butter. Yes. I like that one this time. Yeah. Uh, and light berry, oily, and it coats the tongue. Delicate char, brown sugar, chewy, building heat, slight spice. Now here's an interesting thing. Um, this is the one that we differed the biggest gap of the top 10. Uh, there was a 3.5 point difference sure. between uh, a scoring, but you know, we do add them and average them. You but know, on the double check, you did agree. I d we did double check our top 10. We, that's another thing that we uh, failed to mention. There was some shifting 
of order in that double check of the top 10. And we do this double check because we sample these over a period of, yes. you know, a month or two. Are you really gonna um, trust that this scoring in October and then this scoring in uh, late November, mm -hmm. there was nothing, you know, that happened in between well, there. So that's why when we get it down based on the score of the top 10, that we do the, the, the uh, I wanna say discount double check, <laughs> but <laughs> the top 10 double check. Right, exactly. Okay, not a, not a surprise. Well, we predicted this one. We did pre Hey, good job us. Hey, this uh, might be the only one. <laughs> Stag Jr., this is batch 14. We've yet to get our hands on batch 15, which, uh, you know, launched pretty late in 2020. But this one is 130.2 proof stag. Has historically done well for us in the best of the uh, best of the year. Just looking at our notes, floral. Can't get too close. Talking mm -hmm. about the nose. I said floral, a little earthy. Now talking about the palate. Front of the tongue, spice, crisp and dry-ish. Wow. It's getting better. <laughs> High proof, 125 plus. I was right about that. Grape in there. <laughs> well, you were right. Grape is grape in there. Now becoming one of the tiny mm. little subtle signature notes of Buffalo Trace for us. So. We were one point difference in uh, blind scoring this between us as well. Yeah. Just a little higher. <laughs> Just yeah. a little bit higher, one, but yeah. It's, oh, two years in a row. Stag Jr. bringing it home. <laughs> Chad, I don't even know what to say here. Like shock and surprise. The fact that three <laughs> of the baselines, which we literally just put in here to, three of the four. to check ourselves mm -hmm. is mind blowing to me. But again, this is how you know that we didn't just say, this is what our top 10 is gonna be because it's way too Jim Beam heavy. And we like the nine year, just regular off the shelf single barrel more than that special 12 year cast strength. And this is even after the double check. The double check, we the were like, check. nope, yep, confirmed. We picked this one to be in a uh, third place. Yeah. We agreed. And on the reveal, like, I don't think it was horror. I, I think was this just, was the surprise of the top this 10. This is 100% this was the, surprise the, of the top 10. biggest surprise. Yeah. But this did win our, um, what, 50 under? 50 under $50. Competition. Yeah, right here, blind. Which again. obviously we- Which is why we put it in as a baseline. Right, but obviously we still feel very strongly about it, even blind, um, to, to put it in above so many of these others, so much double, triple, quadruple the cost. <laughs> Wow. Wow, indeed. Wow. Um, now, you can also say, well, yes, you did a blind, but you guys know the Jim Beam profile so well, I feel like you wanted to pick it ahead. And here's the thing if we're doing it on corking and it's our first pour and we like, mm, this could be Jim Beam, maybe Heaven Hill, yeah. When you're doing 10, when you're doing our, our double our check. Our double check? No, it's just that side by goes side. Away. One or two? Yeah. Two. Okay, side by side. Two or three. Yeah, which is better? Two. A or B? A right? Or B. It's just a like being at the eye doctor. Sometimes <laughs> you have to go back. Can you show me that again? Yeah. Uh, and so you're like, oh, okay, on the second time. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I don't even, I don't have any what? more words for this one. I have no more words for this one. Let's move on. Number two, wow, another surprise. Because we did like this one a lot, we didn't realize we liked it as much as we did. I feel like it, it did benefit from opening up when we poured it into that sample bottle, uh, it opened up. Mm -hmm. And also this, honestly, uh, uh, trust tree, truth time here, our, our first bottle of four gate that we purchased. We were kind of late getting into the four gate game only because there's so many offerings out there, especially nowadays, that we were like, okay, let's, because we'd heard good things about and it. And it's a pricey one. And it is a pricey one. This is actually the second highest priced retail one from our top 10 list here. You know, I think another reason why I was so surprised by this one is I think I had, a, I said, you know, finished pours allowed yeah. here, but I think mentally I, I did have a bias against this one. So this one is finished in the cognac and rum casks, yeah. um, which I have learned that I do like. I don't know why I wasn't expecting. But you know, you just get it in your head that you're not gonna pick a finished one mm -hmm. to come so close to first, but. Right, it's a little bit of a, of, a, of a, I guess a pride thing, you know, especially from two Kentuckians. You just want the tried and true Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey to reign king. 
And here comes one who is finished in other casks <laughs> besides your sure. precious bourbon. And you know, again, not to beat a dead horse, but why we do things blind. Correct, yeah. And I had had a gin finished one of these previously. I'd had a sample of like yeah, a we'd gin had finished. Yeah, we'd had them at, at, at festivals and so And I forth, was like, but... no, not for me. But I think it was just that, that particular that finish. finish. Yeah. Uh, and then we had heard about this one. I know, I believe that Fred Minnick really liked this one as well. Mm, I think that's um, why we went up and picked this one we up. We went and picked it up because we were like, all right, we'll give it a, we'll give this one a try. Yeah. Like you said, the first bottle that we have purchased and here it is sitting at, at number two. Number two, yeah. Whoa. Uh, just to give you some notes on the nose, I said apple spice, caramel, mm. honey. I put proof, <laughs> little zest, savory. Then on the palate, I said high proof, exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Oak, punch, spice, vanilla, hug, long finish, rich sorghum sweetness, warming, feels good. <laughs> savory, drinks like a meal. Third sip, little dark cocoa. What is the proof even? Oh, 126.4, okay, I think, well, not, not too bad. You know, we were within a point and a half of each other on this one and I put down a lot of the same notes and again, we do those independently. Packs a punch and wow, you know, so. <laughs> right, yeah, I think we both put- I one. had a lot to write about Exclamation this Exclamation points on this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So surprised, I can't wait to spend more time with this bottle though. I know, um, okay, here we go, mm. folks. Here it is, number one. <laughs> Where's, where's number one? Oh. Oh, look That's at right. Him. It's a media sample. <laughs> oh, he's a little media sample. It's all that we have left in the world of our number one best bourbon. This one turns out to be a bourbon. Uh, American whiskey of 2020, William LaRue Weller. Again, making this list, if we were just making it on what would what would the people like the most, probably wouldn't put this number one because it's super hard to get and it's a little oh. bit of a cop out, like putting a BTAC yeah. as your number one most favorite whiskey is a little bit of a cop out. Right, I think it's kind of expected. But, but it's, again, it's what happened we blind. We did it's, it blind, wow. I mean, 134.5 proof. Uncut, unfiltered, delicious. Well, here comes the proof on comments because I think this uh, ends up being our highest proof in our top 10. No, I, I honestly don't mind that people say that. Like, it's true. I like high proof. We are, we are proof hounds. We like to, uh, you know, defend that we aren't just, but we are proof hounds. We and are. We, and we admit it. But we're more than that as and well. you know what? We're proud of it. There is some variety in our in our top ten. A yeah. little, little beam heavy, but it's a little it's more beam heavy than I would have expected. It is what it is. Now here's another reason why I, I wouldn't want to put this <sighs> as number one because now we're out. We have no bottle of it. We have no more. We it's have gone no forever. No more. I said honey and tea, grape, mm. silky, slight nutty, wine, grape, grape, sugar, and then on the palate I wrote exceptional with an exclamation mm -hmm. point. Nice spice syrup uh, and honey tea, silky. Clove spice, high proof, but approachable, light chocolate. I wrote butter cake. Ooh, that sounds really good. I would eat so some butter cake. That's a good note, Sarah. Butter cake, caramel, toffee, cinnamon, and on the palate, an oaky bite with a chewy spice, caramel, chocolate, char, and pepper. Long finish, chocolate covered grapes. 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 Which those are real and they're really good. Mm. You should try them. Uh, cinnamon and nutmeg and a long, warm hug. There you go. And it you you was... were a little bit more poetic with yours on this one than I was. We were 0.75 away apart on scoring this one. Very close. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. It's WLW. Yeah, I think if you weren't doing a blind, there's the unobvious bias of it being BTAC, and you kind of, this one is known as being put up on a pedestal. It is known. And you kind of want to make it your number one. Two things. If okay. you are, have the opportunity to buy any BTAC, or you're going to look for one, but you're not sure which, obviously this would be my recommendation. Uh, number two, I think a lot of people out there are still hunting Pappy, and fair, fairly enough, you do you. Uh, but I would say do this instead. And if you're going to hunt either, you're gonna pay above retail, like it's it's guaranteed. But this is gonna be less than probably what a Pappy costs. Yeah, I would say on so. On the secondary. Which is weird. I'm not saying do buy it, but I'm not saying don't. don't. <laughs> the taste, I feel like the quality is there this year, among other years, but uh, we're talking about this year. So yeah, I would probably plop down about $400. Like if there were one bottle to splurge on this year, obviously this would be it. This would be it In us. our opinion. Yeah. I'm happy that we got to share it with you guys right here. The last of it. 
Save that. Exceptional. <laughs> Wow, what a ride. That has been a long time in the making. Mm. I think I'm happy about the results. I'm very surprised. I, I can't be unhappy about no, it. No, um, but if you guys wanna see like exactly, you know, how each of the 29, the 25 contenders and the four baselines, how the rest of them shook out um, and are ranking at some of our notes, let us mm -hmm. know down in the comments because I, we can make that a blog on whiskeyambitions.com. Uh, if you That's guys right. want to see it, we can start working on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, wow. Kind of glad to see 2020 go. Yeah. Hopefully 2021 is going to be so much better. Um, if you are watching this on the day that it comes out, happy new year to you. And if you're watching it in May, go Have outside. Hopefully day. the weather's great. But <laughs> that, that'll do it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, we'd love to have you. You can click right up here. There's suggestions of other videos right down here. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay. Until next year. <gasps> Drink more bourbon. <laughs>